Even when we decide to take responsibility, we are still not aware of all the internal and external challenges. That's why the second step of awareness after the decision to assume responsibility is to recognize our challenges. We must become aware of ourselves and admit to ourselves all our limiting manifestations and ego challenges and the fears behind them. All our blind spots, our secrets that limits us, and experiences we have never had and are not aware of. Help with awareness also comes in the form of powerful communication tool, the Johari window, through which we can work on introspection and awareness. The main goal of the Johari window is to offer and receive, rather to become aware of new information about ourselves. Through this technique, we perform introspection exercises and as a result of this process, we shape the different areas that creates it. The Johari window consists of four areas, free, blind, hidden, and unknown. It is essential to know that the size of each area is completely individual. Only in the illustration they are the same size. We decide ourselves how much we will share with others and how much we will become aware of ourselves. The goal is to make the known area as large as possible and the other areas as small as possible. The free area is in the upper left corner. It is a part of us that we know about ourselves and others know about us. For example, everyone around us knows our name, what we like to eat, what we do, how tall we are, whether we are married or not, and the like. The size of this area varies depending on how much we are willing to reveal about ourselves, practice new behaviors, or to receive criticism. The practice has shown that people with a larger open space are those with more significant emotional maturity and acquire their ego and live more harmoniously and healthy. The reason for their greater well-being is that they show themselves as they are, without fears that could affect how they behave. The ideal behavior of a person is absolutely the same when he is alone with his thoughts and when he is in front of people. For the simple reason that he understands that only reason to hide is fear and he is not ready to live in it. How many of us are ready to reveal everything about ourselves, accept constructive criticism or step out of our comfort zone by doing new and unknown things? The question is often asked, why would we do it at all? The answer is for a simple reason because by increasing the free area, we become aware of our whole soul and silence our ego and its influence on our lives. We switch off the autopilot and get into the driver's seat of our lives. The blind area's main characteristic is what others know about us, but we don't see ourselves. That's our blind spot. Here we talk about the little things by which we avoid self-realization to deep problems that are immediately obvious to others like our selfishness or stubbornness. Information about our blind spot can only be given to us by a mature person. It is important not to leave a deeper evaluation to everyone because we can find ourselves in danger of becoming someone else's emotional garbage can where values or flaws can be attributed to us that may not be ours, but those of our mentor. Wisely, with critical thinking, we must choose a mentor who does not project his own ego onto us. That's why there is a triple rule when choosing a mentor as help in awakening. Never listen to a person who tells you that anybody is responsible instead of you, who tells you what you should or shouldn't do, and who doesn't live what they say. It is up to mentor to just point out the reality and current challenges that governs you. Overcoming challenges and the resulting realization must come from you. That's the only right thing to do. The hidden area contains things 
that are known to us but unknown to others. It's what we keep to ourselves, the part that we don't want to share, the secrets. And the only reason why we would not want to tell something about ourselves is fear. Fear of other people's opinion, of confrontation or rejection. There can be no other reason for hiding. And the truth is that we often do not dare to share secrets because we cannot know what will happen or what will be the reaction of others to the truth. And it can certainly be both unpleasant and painful, but not nearly as harmful as if all that emotional waste remains inside you. The key is to bring out all your secrets, fears and things that weigh us down. We just have to have the courage to do it. And the most common reaction of fear is, why should I talk about myself? Why should I show myself who I am? Because it is not us. We are not our fears. We are not a traumatic event that happened in the past. We are not the fear we live and the pain we inflicted on another or that was inflicted on us. The truth is again, that we don't know who we are and we won't find out as long as we identify with our fear. We are not special and unique because we don't let anyone see our intimate secrets. We are simply weak because we live in fear. It's okay to show weaknesses and reveal all your deepest secrets. It's good for your soul. It is strength. No matter how difficult it is, there shouldn't be any taboo topic and the truth will silence the ego. The unknown area are all the things we never did, did not dare to do and were not allowed to do. We don't need to emphasize why a person who has traveled the world, seen and done different things is a more mature person than someone who has never left their neighborhood or village. That's why it is important to expose yourself and do things we didn't even know how to do yesterday. Only the fear of change and failure can prevent us. So, what if we don't succeed? It is still only one of the ways to success because there is no success without failure. Without darkness, there is no light, just as without ego, there is no love. The worst thing is not to try or give yourself a chance. That's why let's do everything we wanted to do and even better, what we didn't even think of. We don't know if we like to travel and we heard from everyone that it's the best thing to break prejudices. Let's take the plunge and travel and make no apologies for it. Status and material things are important to us all our lives. Dare to let it go and commit to something different. We don't like nature or solitude. Let's try and step anywhere into the unknown. And let's make mistakes. That is the way we learn. Let us now use the previously explained awareness to recognize the manifestations of our ego. Because we often stop at that first step. Actually, we don't even start. Let's look around us and recognize that awareness is a rare commodity. An annoying neighbor, a greedy boss, a mother who does not love herself, a father who loves only himself, a sister who only likes expensive clothes, a colleague that hates everything different from him, or a friend who is spoiled and envious. Do you believe any of them are aware of their limitation? So let's become aware of our ego and its manifestations. Everything that causes us resistance and everything that we feel is missing. See all the manifestations of the state of ego listed here to help you recognize them in your own life. Also, listed are all the manifestations of the state of love that comes as a reward for the silenced ego. Everything we think, say and do today and how we live is a consequence of ego or love. There is no third variable. 
The ego speaks with fear and manifests the state of ego, for example, inferiority or superiority, and love responds to the same by manifesting the state of love, interiority. Both are consequences, positive or negative, that accompany following or not following the truth to oneself and others. And sometimes it seems that the manifestations we currently have, whatever they are, are given and unchanging. And that's why we all say, I'm like that. For example, I have to work, or I'm stubborn, or I'm impatient. But know that we are not like that. That is not true. What we are now is only a reflection of the miles we have traveled, the sum of our experiences or lack of experience, and the challenges we have comprehended. We can only understand so much, nothing more and nothing less. We need to overcome a lot of challenges to find out who we really are. And to find out, we must overcome our natural fear of change and embark on the path of further maturity because default as such does not exist. For example, if an introvert faces his fears and overcome them, then he will no longer be an introvert. If an extrovert suppresses his ego and his need to stand out, he will no longer be an extrovert. Only through emotional maturation, through the lessons hidden in the ego challenges and the insights we experience along the way, as well as the acquired clarity, do we truly discover who we are. My name is Zoran Salopek and in the next episode we will get to know some of the more important manifestations of the ego.